And now it is my pleasure to introduce the start of the 18th annual Embedded Linux Conference closing game. Please give a hand for your host, Tim Bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. This thing makes awesome sound effects. I don't know if you can hear it. Well, uh, anyway. Um, welcome to the closing games. Uh, if you've never been to the closing games before, uh, uh, welcome. If you've been before, welcome. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you now have kind of an idea. It's just a time to relax and have a little fun after the event. Uh, we, this has been a tradition going on for many, many years. Uh, today's theme is the special space edition of my trivia game. So, oh, wait, wait, I got to turn the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, this is a very, this is actually Count Dooku's lightsaber, so, but I'm going to turn it off. And oh, that's an excellent question. I do not know. Well, I'll just put it right there. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, let's see. So I've been monitoring uh, Linux in space for a while now. Um, last year, I kind of intensified my study. So Sony, it turns out, is a very diverse company. Uh, we actually had three space missions in the last two years. Um, we were on the Hakuto R lander. If you know anything about what happened with that, that was a bummer. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then Linux for Space showed up at last year in Dublin, and they were here again this year. And so just kind of interesting stuff going on with space. So uh, before I get started, I have a couple of little quick housekeeping things I need to do. Uh, we need to uh, thank the people who make this possible. We could not do it without our sponsors and our diamond sponsors this year, Ant Micro, Google, Intel, and Meta. So please join me in... Thanking them for sponsoring us. Also, our program committee. Uh, we had a great program committee. I think we had a great program this year. Um, and so uh, thanks to Frank and Jeff and Kate and uh, Yoshi and Marta, Thomas, Drew, and myself, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Um, we wouldn't have this event if it weren't for the speakers and the time they put in to do their research and create their presentations. The room moderators uh, appreciate their work uh, to help out with uh, keeping stuff on track. And then, of course, you as the attendees. Uh, so, um, and I'll, we got to thank the Linux uh, Foundation event staff. <laughs> really are... Really are the best in the business. Um, so, a couple, a little bit more on housekeeping the speakers. If you have not done so already, shame on you, they were due on Monday. Uh, but put your slides up on sketch.org. Uh, don't make us hunt you down. We will try to email you, but don't rely on that. Put, put the, also, the ELC sessions were recorded. Uh, they're actually available now uh, for all conference attendees on the virtual platform. So some people who come in person, they, don't, they never even look at the virtual platform. But like, if you missed a session, you can actually go watch it right now. Um, uh, some of the ones today may take until tomorrow to get up, but, uh, but in general. And then they'll be in, in YouTube on six to eight weeks. So I'm not kidding when I say thank you to the attendees. It's not just we're grateful you're here, but your attendance here makes it possible for us to get this information out as a resource for the community for many years, uh, which is a really great thing. Um, and the presentation, the presentations page is already up and there are some PDFs already been loaded up there. Uh, so you can put your presentation directly on there. If it goes to sketch.org, we'll probably, we, we do a sweep like every week or two, uh, but we will put all the slides and links to videos as they're available. And again, some slides are already there. So future events. So Embedded Linux Conference 2024 next year, we're going to be in Seattle, Washington in mid-April. Uh, and we'll be co-located with Open Source Summit North America. So we're excited about that. And we'll be back in Europe in 2025. We don't know when or where, but we're shooting for spring time frame. Um, and uh, we'll be part of Embedded Open Source Summit. Not, the, not the, the broader one, but the more embedded focused one. So now I have just a real quick tribute um, to Frank Rowand. Uh, a lot of you 
know Frank. He was in the Linux uh, community for quite a long time. Uh, he retired last year, and uh, he's been an employee. At, he was at Sony for 17 years. He worked at Monta Vista uh, doing stuff. He actually worked on uh, Linux for PlayStation 3, so that, that, uh, and many real-time operating systems before that. So he was a member of our program committee, including this year. After he retired, he continued to participate in the community. Uh, and he's the creator of the most complex spreadsheet I've ever seen in my life. Uh, <laughs> It was an amazing spreadsheet used by the program committee. And he's been a speaker for <clears throat> many, many years. So this is some of the things he's talked about. He's talked about uh, real-time performance. He did a lot of real-time stuff over the years. He was involved in preempt RT. <clears throat> and then he got into device tree. And so um, you see an intermix of real-time stuff and device tree stuff. And he's been all over the place. Uh, talked about being a kernel maintainer, uh, static warnings in the kernel. And he's been, over the years, a great, strong advocate for open source. And uh, that's a picture of us at one of the uh, events in Japan with us meeting Linus. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, again, a great friend, a great colleague. Uh, we normally hand this trophy out in person, but he's uh, attending virtually with us. He's not here with us today. So uh, just join me in giving a round of thank you for Frank. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to play some games. See, that wasn't too much housekeeping. We're going to get right into it. Okay, so I like games where everyone has a chance to win. So we'll play some skill games, <laughs> so-called, uh, <laughs> and, and some luck games. The basic outline, uh, those of you who have done this before, you know what happens. But we, we basically are going to start with everyone in the room. We'll narrow the contestants down until we have just a few people left. And then... Uh, we will give them a prize. Actually, we have a little ticket for a prize that we'll give you. Um, and then uh, at the end of the session, after we've completed all the games, the people who are winners will come up. And we've got our prizes numbered up here. Um, so uh, make sure that you have two cards of different colors, red and green. Uh, at the beginning of each round, everyone's going to stand up. And hold, when I do a trivia question, you'll hold up the card that corresponds to the answer, sometimes two cards. Um, if you are wrong, we request that you sit down. Uh, we have judges who are watching, uh, so, <laughs> so don't try to cheat your way through. We'll catch you. Um, and then eventually the people who are left standing. It's a little bit of an exercise. Uh, and, you know, we know that most of you sit around looking at a computer all day, so this is probably beneficial. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but what is at stake? Wow, this year we did really well by our sponsors. Uh, we have boards, boards, boards. Uh, I want to point out uh, a bunch of really great hardware to take home and play around with. We've got two Beagle Play boards with Beagle Connect Freedom, uh, a little satellite module. Very nice. So we want to thank the BeagleBoard.org Foundation for those. Uh, we have two SenseCap indicators uh, donated by Seed Studio. Two NRF 5340 boards, which are Zephyr Dev boards donated by Nordic Semiconductor, and a Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer donated by Emlick. So thank the sponsors for those. <laughs> but wait, there's more. So we have books. We have Mastering Embedded Linux Programming. This is now kind of a tradition. Chris, are you here? All right, so Chris is here. He's the author of this book, and I am confident he is willing to sign it. So if you win one of these books, you can get a signature from the author. He'll be disappointed if you don't. Yeah, he'll be dis if you don't get it signed, he'll be really disappointed. So make sure you do that. Um, and then we have some Rust programming books. Very apropos now that the kernel is switching completely to Rust. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, you too can be a hit at cocktail parties. Um, Let's see. Oh, and we have lots of gift cards, uh, $25, $50, $100. You could go home richer. Uh, we have pr uh, professional LWN.net subscriptions. We have two of those. And we have, uh, as a, kind of a tradition we do, is we get some stuff from the local city. So we have some souvenirs of Prague, and we have kind of two little uh, set collections of things. Very nice gifts up here for the winners. So I want to thank the... Uh, LF staff for, for helping us get all this rounded up. Okay, so our first game is going to be Embedded Linux History. 
technical nerd and space trivia. I don't know where the nerd comes from. Uh, uh, but, uh, and an important disclaimer, this game is not fair. So I don't want to hear any whining. There, there are a couple of trick questions in here. Um, and I'm sorry, if you're a virtual attendee, I apologize. Uh, it's, it's hard to run the virtual game at the same time with the streaming lag. We tried it a couple of years, but it didn't work that well. So you can play at home and keep track of your answers and feel good about whether you would have won or not. Um, so our very first question, everybody stand up, please. <laughs> So the current version of, okay, the other thing is, I'm going to say one, two, three, go, uh, because uh, I know people look at other people's answers. So I want all the answers to go up at the same time. Uh, the current version of the kernel is, is it green 6.4 or red 6.5 RC1? Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, I did it. Okay, and the answer is green. So we're still in the merge window. We have not. If you, ha if you did red, please sit down. Okay. <clears throat> so we haven't got to our release candidates yet. It was only on, it was Sunday. So I had to change these slides because Linus changed our, changed our thing this week. <clears throat> okay. According to Guinness Book of World Records, the Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle by area in the world. Is that true or false? Don't hold. Don't go up yet. One, two, three, go. Okay, this is interesting. There's a mix. The answer is true. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what happened? So what happened? I don't know if it happened this year, but what happened uh, many years ago when we were Prague previously is I eliminated every single Prague person with this question. I hope that's not the case. Uh, you should be proud of your, your record here. It's a, it's a world record. Um, okay, so next one. <clears throat> the cell phone in your pocket has more computing power than the Apollo 11 mission uh, that went to the moon and back, including, including onboard and ground control computers. Is that true or false? Well, how do you compute analog computing power? <laughs> uh, oh, that's... Uh, just, just pick an answer. <laughs> and the game is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, two, three. Well, I did. Okay. Uh, I didn't fool anyone with that one. Well, a couple of people. It's green. So the Apollo guidance computer was uh, barely at the level of a pocket calculator. And uh, the IBM system that was running on the ground was only 1.2 MIPS. And we hope your phone is doing better than that. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Reality or fiction? A company has made a prosthetic has made prosthetic robot arms so that a human can use up to six limbs simultaneously, including their own. Is that reality or fiction? <laughs> the, the, question, the question is right there on the screen. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, this is actually true. It's reality. Yeah. <laughs> The arms are controlled by an AI system that interprets signals from the human. Uh, pretty, pretty wild if you think about it. How are we doing? We got we to gotta keep going. Okay. There are now how many processors running Linux in low Earth orbit? Is it about 6,400 or about 260,000? I made these far apart, so... <laughs> okay, so one... Two, three, go. And the answer is about 260,000. Each Starlink satellite has 66 processors. Oh, wait, wait. How are we doing? Okay, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Oh, thirteen. 13. I'm afraid we got to do one more round. I'm sorry for you who are standing. This is your last chance. Okay. When was ELC Europe last? I almost said it earlier in my, in my banter. Uh, was it six years ago or five years ago? And one, two, three, go. Oh, interesting. It was six years ago. Oh, I think we only got rid of two people back there. Okay. 
Should I do one more? Okay, this is risky. I have eliminated everyone before. <laughs> okay, last one. Okay, a research group announced a processor that could be produced for less than one penny per chip. And what breakthrough did they use? Was it made out of plastic? Or did they reduce the gate count to just over 2,000 transistors? Okay, so think about, I'm going to give you a second to think about that. Which of those was the major breakthrough that they announced? Uh, and one, two, three, go. Okay, we got a nice, a nice good split there. The answer is the gate count. <laughs> All right, so if you, have, if you have a red card still up, uh, Drew, can you get that? So. <clears throat> well, the good news for the rest of you is uh, you're all back in. So, but wait, wait a second for us to get the... So we have our first four prize winners. Yeah, so the reason it wasn't plastic, it was a plastic chip, but they were able to get the yield higher by lowering the gate count. Uh, and so plastic chips, ah, people have done that, come on. Uh, <laughs> What? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, as, uh, I don't know how many gates the 4004 had. Um, okay, everybody back up. Let's start again. Okay, researchers at the University of Bonn had demonstrated improved RNA error correction uh, by one of these two techniques. One, replaying transcription with a chemical loop or red... That was the green one. Inserting MOS DNA into human cells. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay. It's actually the MOS DNA. <laughs> so, so, it's, so uh, land, land plants, it turns out the land plants, including MOS, have some kind of RNA <clears throat> repair mechanism that fixes mutations better. And they're still working out the side effects. Uh, so, okay, next one. Oh, template question. There you go. Uh, Count Dooku was, was he, okay, this is a tricky one. Was he a Jedi master? Was he a Sith Lord? Was he the hero of the separatist movement? Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, this was a trick question. Uh, the answer is all three. Nobody has to sit down. <laughs> See, Count Dooku delivers the joy. Um, it's a very complex character in the Star Wars universe, but uh, anyway. Um, question number 10. Okay, this, one, this one's funny. I just found out about this this week. What unfortunate thing happened during the restoration of Prague's famous astronomical clock? It was recently restored. And one of these things happened. One, one of the restorer's fingers was severed and a part of his finger is still in the machine. Yikes. Or some images were replaced by a painter with images of his own family. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, it turns out they had a rogue painter. <laughs> so... Some of, the, some of the images bore striking resemblances to this guy's... Uh, there has been a little bit of a, uh, an outrage and some controversy there. They're not sure whether they should repaint him. Personally, I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I, I don't want to desecrate ancient art, but it, uh, it's, as pranks go, it's a pretty good one. Uh, okay. Okay, this one's hard. NVIDIA announced a processor for the automotive sector with an amazing transistor count of about 80 billion transistors or 1.2 trillion transistors? One, two, three, go. Okay. Come on, 1.2, that's crazy. It's only 80 billion. <laughs> Come on. Don't be ridiculous. No, that's still 80 billion transistors is. Uh, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, the GPU, plastic GPU. Um, <laughs> so, what? so um, okay. Oh, this is a fun one, too. An artist has recently developed this frightening combination. Green, a mouse with a, a spinning saw blade backpack. Or red, a plant that can control a machete. 
<laughs> One, two, three, go. Okay, it turns out it's the machete. <laughs> How are we doing? Okay, I know you guys are going to hate this, but we got to do one more. Okay, okay, a tech startup recently announced plans to build a data center where? On the moon or at the bottom of the ocean? One, two, three, go. The answer is on the moon. It's the space episode. It's the space special edition. Okay, I think we are down to our winners. So go ahead and okay, so that's five nine. Okay. <laughs> the the great thing about building a data center on the moon is that the physical security is really high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, one one more. Okay. Thank you. We had I think that was either five or six more winners, but we're ready to play some more, so everybody up. <laughs> Who is Star Wars' greatest villain character? Is it Darth Vader, Darth Maul, or red and green, Count Dooku? Okay, I'll give you a moment to think about that. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, if you did not answer Count Dooku, you need to read the room. <laughs> So, come on, man. I'm standing up here in a Count Dooku costume. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, okay. This game is not fair. I know. The other villains have their, their attributes. But I actually found an article that supports my... Supports my <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. NASA currently plans to use which processor architecture for its high-performance spaceflight computer microprocessor? Is it ARM or RISC-5? Okay, one, two, three, go. Uh, I fooled some of you, but not very many. RISC-5. So we'll just, we'll, pithy remark goes here. Um, okay, oh, this one's fun too. An edible, rechargeable battery was recently announced by a group of researchers from what European country? Based on your knowledge of, of, of what? Oh, I Italy. Okay. Ignore the typo. It's okay. Um, was it France or Italy? Both known for their good cuisine and their, and their edible, rechargeable batteries. Um, actually, only one's known for the battery. It's Italy. Oh. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. There's, that's the closing game for you. Oh, shoot. I was going to get some of you, too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, this is another uh, what half food question. Re uh, this time, I'm going to say one, two, three, go. Researchers recently demonstrated the first transistor made of, was it wood or jello? <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. Oh, the, yeah, okay. It was wood. If you answered jello, I don't know how you'd make a transistor out of jello. Um, <laughs> okay, oh. Paleontologists have recently presented evidence that Tyrannosaurus rex is different than popularly depicted. Okay, all those Jurassic Park movies, inaccurate. Um, okay, so what did they find out? That they had opposable talons on their front hands or that they had lips that covered their teeth? Okay, red or green. And one, two, three, go. Okay. 
it was lips. <laughs> oh, I, you could tell pithy remark goes here is my, is my, oh, I'm supposed to replace those. Uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, kind of a mundane question. Maybe the Prague people are still up. Prague ha has how many inhabitants? Just the capital city, not the whole metropolitan area. Just the capital city of Prague. Is it less than 2 million or more than 2 million? And one, two, three, go. Oh, did I get anyone? Uh, oh, I did it again. It's the correct, the correct answer is green. The correct answer is green. Ignore. <laughs> I don't. Who made this deck? That's what I want to know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> happens every year. Oh, this is a... This. So, Ken Thompson, the inventor of Unix, uh, C and UTF-8, and the original ED, the first regex implementation, Plan 9, and Inferno. Okay, Invent this guy's invented so much stuff. He announced in March that he plans to use this operating system from now on. Was it green Mac OS or red Raspbian? What do you know about Ken Thompson and his computing preferences? <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, the answer is Raspbian. <laughs> People are not, he said this at scale. He was given a QA and he said, I've invested a zillion years in Apple, but I'm going to throw it all the way. I'm going to Linux. And uh, nobody knows if he was serious. <laughs> But that would be awesome to see Ken Thompson running Raspbian. I think we're okay on our on our count. Yeah, how many have we got? Nine. Nine? Uh, with, uh, okay. How many have we given out? We've given out like eleven or twelve. Uh, okay. Sorry, we're gonna do one more. This will be the last one. I know. I, if you're a winner, you got. How many do you have, Drew? Oh, okay, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So you are winners if you're still standing. All right, yay. <laughs> okay. So as soon as you get your yeah, as soon as you get your ticket, sit down. Are you get you guys already get your ticket? Okay. I'm trying to remember. I have a couple more real questions and then some dummy ones. I'm not. I'm just gonna do a couple. These are just for fun. We're not gonna because I don't think I have enough left to eliminate enough people. Uh, you know how sad is that? Uh, but I'll, I'll. You can answer. Everybody can stay seated. I'll give you a little bit of a break before we go on to rock paper scissors. But uh, so, question 21. BusyBox was initially created for MMU list systems. Is that true or false? Uh, one, two, three, go, and it's false. <laughs> it was created for Debian, Debian boot floppies. Um, and, okay, and then the reason, I, the reason I wanted to keep going with these is I, I love this question. Uh, the Hakuto uh, R lander failed to land on the moon in April 2023 due to what kind of problem? Was it green, a sensor fusion error, or red? A missed real-time deadline. Uh, one, two, three, go. Oh, I would have eliminated a fair amount. It was a sensor fusion error. Oh, am I offline? Oh, what happened? Oh, there, are. we're back. Okay, uh, let me see the next question. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll do this one because it's just a joke. Okay. <laughs> Timberg can be purchased for less than fifteen dollars. Is that tr true? Oh, check that out. No way. Even on sale, it's $15.99. <laughs> I'm worth, I, I am worth way more than you guys think. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to, uh, this is incredibly dangerous. I'm going to unplug this and skip forward. Oh, I had some good ones. Oh, yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> Oops. Oh, great. Oh, you have nine? How many, how many you got? Four. Okay, I got to do this. 
Sorry. I don't want these showing up on a video somewhere and then people getting free answers. Okay, so this will probably wreak havoc with the video, but we'll see if we recover here. Okay, so time game one over, time for game two. This is, uh, if you were here, if you were attended last year, you know I did rock, paper, scissors, penguin krill. Uh, <laughs> But I just went back to rock, paper, scissors. Uh, this, and this is against the present, presentation. Um, and these are the hand signs. If you've never played rock, paper, scissors before, you need to get out more. Uh, but it's, this is paper is flat. Scissors is, you know, two fingers up. And this is rock. And uh, let's see. Oh, one of those. And this is the general rules. The rules are pretty easy. Paper beats rock for some reason that nobody can figure out. Rock beats scissors, that's pretty obvious, and scissors beats paper. Um, so, everybody up. How are we doing on time? Okay. So, wh okay, what's going to happen is I'll say, ready, set, throw, and then you give your sign. I'm not going to give a sign because the sign's in the presentation, but don't change your sign after the thing comes up. Uh, so, ready, set, throw. And presenter is rock. If you stay in the game, if you are paper, it's always rock. The first one. An advantage for people who have played this before is my first one's always rock. <laughs> but it won't always be. You can't count on it. Okay. 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 This is a brutal game. It goes very fast because we eliminate two-thirds of the audience on every round. Okay. So ready, set, throw. Okay, paper, stay in if you're a scissors. Oh, okay, actually a pretty good number of people. So if you were holding up scissors, stay up, stay standing. Um, ready, set, throw. Rock, stay in the game if you're a paper. Oh, oh, come on, that's, that's a statistical anomaly. Either that or I'm predictable, that's not good. Okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, scissors. Oh, okay, come on, there's something going on here. Okay, that's, that's uncanny. I think we could call it, though. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, go ahead. Yay. I don't know. So... So uh, one year, we had a person who looked back, found previous slides, and that happened to be the year I reused a set <laughs> and, uh, and won a bunch. So I have a program that randomizes, that actually writes a random rock, paper, scissors output string uh, that I use, uh, except I do manually edit, like to put rock as the first one, but don't count on it next year. <laughs> so the more... The, the more times that BN says it's always rock, the more I'm convinced I, it's going to be paper next year. <laughs> okay, everybody up? Okay, what do we do? Seven left. Okay, perfect. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, ready, set, throw. Okay, oh. Oh, we got a lot of scissors. Let's see. Presenter is scissors, though. So if you're a rock, stay in. <laughs> okay. Ready, set, throw. Okay, we've got a good mix here. Paper. So if you're scissors, stay in. Uh, the, the, the duplicates usually cause mayhem. Okay. Ready, set, throw. Okay. Paper again. <laughs> This is this happens sometimes with uh, just okay. So how are we? Are we at seven? Okay, I believe that's it. Uh, you you are winners. All right. Okay. Okay. Since this is randomized, I can do this. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many there are of these. There's a lot of them. Oops. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, so thank you very much for coming. I just have a, a closing thought. And uh, this is something that I learned very early in my open source career. Uh, a lot of people who have been doing open source for a long time understand this, but a lot of uh, newcomers don't. And I, and I think it's an important principle. Um, so at, at one of the first open uh, Ottawa Linux symposiums that I went to, uh, I was having dinner with another developer from the open source community. And I was there representing Sony and the C Linux forum. And I said something like, uh, you know, it, uh, we would really like it if you guys did this or, you know, or if, uh, if that one project, if those guys would, would uh, you know, add to the documentation or, you know, you need to add some testing to this. And it was completely the wrong mindset, right? The, the community is not a them or a you. The community is us. It's all of us. And... I took a selfie at the reception and I, I posted it to my family uh, saying, here's me and 800 of my friends. Um, the very first mistake that a lot of developers make is assuming that they're not part of the community. But just by coming here and interacting, you're now part of a global community of developers uh, that is doing great things for the world. The, the, uh, the keynote that we had on Tuesday uh, or no, it was Wednesday, talking about, you know, how open source is saving rhinoceroses, it's saving the environment. We're doing amazing things, and you're part of that. Uh, there are people who have, probably in this room, who have code that's running on a helicopter on Mars. That's an amazing, amazing thing. And we should all be proud of that work, and we should support each other and uh, work together going forward. So the future is bright for Embedded Linux. I hope that you uh, got something good out of Embedded Linux Conference this year. Hope you learned something new, uh, made some new acquaintances, and I hope to see you all next year. And uh, so, thanks. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll get my, my lightsaber. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. So, uh, housekeeping. If you are a prize winner, if you have one of those tickets, uh, we, you, we need you to come up and get your prize. Uh, the gift cards. Oh. This is making noises. I don't know if you can. Uh, so the gift cards will be mailed to you, and we need your email address. And so what's going to happen is as you come up, you'll see which prize you got, and uh, your number corresponds to a prize. Um, and we need for you to take a picture. They're, the LF staff is going to take a picture of, with your badge, and your gift card and your prize so that we can keep track of that and make sure all that happens. If you didn't win a prize, I'm very sorry, but go have fun in Prague. It's a beautiful city, and uh, thank you for coming. So. Thank you.